Four important secrets on how to accept yourself in 10 minutes or less. When I was younger, I had anxiety issues with going to school dances. I always wanted to go to the school dances. In fact, it was the perfect place for me because I love talking to girls. The school dances offered the perfect opportunity, but I wouldn't go. I was terrified. I was scared of going to the dances. My reason, in retrospect, is so silly, but at the time it paralyzed me. Every time the opportunity came about, I thought my way out of it. I was terrified for people to see me dance because all of the people in my neighborhood could dance like pop stars, at least in my mind they could. One day this girl that I had the biggest crush on asked me if I was going to the homecoming dance after the football game. Of course, I used the excuse of football as a reason as to why I couldn't go. And I told her, nah, I won't be going because I just wanna focus on the game and my family is going to take me out to dinner after. It'll be my last homecoming here. So they're taking me to my favorite restaurant. Isn't it funny that when we lie, we come up with so many details? And if someone quizzed us on those details, we would instantly forget. I'll never forget that lie though, because that's one of the activities I genuinely wanted to do. I wanted to hang out with my family. My family unit was breaking apart and all I wanted to do was get us in the same space. The truth is I wasn't going to dinner and I wasn't going to the dance either. I was going to play the football game and then I was going home immediately after that. With this energy in mind, I wanna give you a few tips that can help you get through a situation similar to this. If you ever experience self-doubt, a lack of self-love, maybe anxiety, I hope these four tips help you start to accept yourself more instantly. First, I'm gonna read you a quote. When we doubt who we are, it causes us to go inside of our head and to think, to rethink, and then to overthink about the outcomes the worst war in the world is the one that goes on inside of our heads when we are not confident in ourselves. It's a process, but we have to love ourselves as we grow. We have to accept ourselves for the human that we are today. Step one, never compare yourself to other versions of yourself. This is the most common mistake we make in life when it comes to self-acceptance. If you really want to accept yourself. You can't compare yourself to who you were back in high school, middle school, or when you got out of college. You can't compare yourself to that person. You definitely can't compare yourself to who you're gonna be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. The truth is, nobody knows who you will be in the future. And the past doesn't really define you. The past is the past. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. Step number two, important secrets on how to accept yourself. Stop comparing yourself to other people. In a way, we're actually taught to compare ourselves to other people, and we don't have to. It's conditioning us to compare our grades, our clothing, our physical bodies. We don't need to do this, but we have a, we have a society that uses imagery to sell product. Consumerism is one of the main re reasons we compare ourselves. It happens with subtle little thoughts like, damn, I wish I had that body, or damn, I wish I had abs like that. With social media now, we get insight on people's personal lives. This allows us to compare how often we fly, how often we eat at fancy restaurants, or who goes to more live events. Social media is not the problem, and neither is the people who are sharing their life and their journey. The problem is that a lot of us are conditioned to compare our lives instead of just observing the content. I am a content creator. I am trained to read, to watch, and to listen to other content creators' art. I never think that there's a I never think that theirs is better or worse than mine. You should have the same approach when it comes to social media. Observe other people's pages as a fan objectively. Be appreciative of what they post in their content. Be happy for them and for their successes. Never compare yourself to their posts, to their journey, to their progress. Just appreciate their journey as it is, and then appreciate yours. Let's be real, none of us are perfect, but we sure know how to make it look like we are. Tip number three, care less about what people say. If we go back to the story I gave you from the very beginning, you'll see that we're talking about a person who is highly obsessed with the judgment that others will pass on to him. Terrified to go to the dance because of how good other people were. But I mean, how do you know? Terrified to go to the dance because he thought others would make fun of him. Like, does that matter? Does it really matter if people make fun of you? Maybe it matters 
what people think about us if we're trying to find a mate or if we're trying to get a job. I'm sure those people matter. I'm sure the, their opinions matter. But going to a school dance, does it really matter though the opinions of the other people in there? In there? When are we going to stop caring so much about what other people have to say about us? We can't do anything about other people's opinions. So why can't we just live our life the way that we deserve, full of freedom, full of happiness, full of joy, full of bliss? Why do we have to worry and obsess about other people's judgment? I don't think we do. We don't have to. And if we do, it's a choice. Step number four. This is something that I say in all of my live talks. It's not about what you feel. It's about what you understand. To reach a place of acceptance, you have to have a realistic view of the world and a realistic view of yourself. A lot of the times we are not realistic with our ways, our ways of thinking about the world and ourselves. For example, I'm not a great dancer, but I'm not completely lost. I can hold a rhythm. I didn't have to judge myself so harshly as I was back then. I was not realistic and I wasn't able to be realistic because I was comparing myself. I was comparing myself to everyone else. To really know yourself, you just have to have a realistic view of your strengths and your weaknesses. Most people are too harsh when they talk about their own weaknesses and they highly overestimate their strengths. So the goal is to find an honest, objective and realistic view of who we are. Sometimes this may come from taking constructive criticism from other people and actually listening to them, not because what they're saying is more important than how we feel about ourselves, but the people we spend time with, our friends and family, they can provide us constructive criticism. So in that regard, it's okay to listen to people who are gonna help you create a, a better realm of understanding who you are. Earlier when I'm saying don't listen to people, yeah, don't listen to people who don't know you, people who don't have value in your life, people who don't bring anything to the table, people who are literally going to judge you because you don't dance as well as them. Those people's opinions don't matter because they haven't taken any time to get to know you. They haven't taken any time to sit with you, to struggle with you. They're judging you off of something basic and simple. So their opinion doesn't matter. But if I'm your best friend and we eat lunch all the time, we walk home together from school or we talk on the phone, we FaceTime three times a week. I can tell you about yourself in a loving way because I obviously care about you. So I can tell you about yourself and give you feedback to help your life be better. In conclusion, I hope these four tips help you towards accepting yourself. When you start accepting yourself, you really give yourself a new lease on life. You really start to love yourself. You really start to appreciate yourself. And when you, when you vibrate at that type of frequency right there, all your relationships change. Everything changes You're with your teammates, at the job, 